And now, with thanks to Bright Ideas Lighting, Talbot Avenue at Loan, building or renovating, they work with you to create a bespoke lighting plan for your home. Brightideas.ie. Last week, William wouldn't share his toys. Well, he's not here this week, is he, boys? So now as we welcome our DIY dude, there'll be nothing naughty, insulting or rude. With William away, Mr. Clunan is so merry as he shares his big old brain with Ronan Berry. Are you ready, kids? It's Mr. Fix-It. Well, he called you old. Yeah, but he, he credited me with having a big brain. Oh, okay. So he kind of, yeah. It mm. sounds kind of Christmassy, that voice. I don't know why. Is that his Santa Claus voice no, as that, well? That, that's his actual voice. <laughs> the usual one you hear is when he adds all the filters on it. Like, you know, you've never seen him. He's only about two feet tall. He's actually, uh, and he lives here too and all that kind of thing. Anyway, good morning, Brian. Good morning. How are you, Ron? <laughs> great, great. Uh, did you watch the fight last night? Oh, stop. That's a fantastic. Yeah. Unreal. I think it's, you know, I know with boxing as well, people are going, oh, they don't know if they like it as a yeah. board. It can be hard work. But I think as soon as it's over and you see like her doing that, you kind of realise like the effort Absolutely. and the well, determination. And, 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 and to be honest with you, the, the effort, the skill, the fact that she made it seem, she like she really, she really won it. I felt she won it very conclusively. But then the joy at the end was just amazing. So I sent a text to my daughter to, to watch it and said, I'm too tired. And then she sent me a text saying, I'm so glad you told me to watch that. She said, I'm energised after watching that. That reminds and that me, was it. When, when Michael Carruth won his medal, my mother ran down. My, one of my brothers was still in bed. And she said, come up quick. He's, I think he's, he's going to win the medal. And he goes, mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was disgusted with him. He wouldn't get out of bed, you know. So, yeah, I think he did. But it's amazing her. watching that. Like, it, yeah. it would energise you. Yeah, yeah. It's phenomenal. And I think, yeah. as well, you know, Ireland Celtic Tiger, when that new kind of Irish almost, um, you know, confidence levels rose and began, yeah. began to really take her place in the world. And we're still very modest, but I think she she kind of really embodies that kind of Irish people when they work hard and they achieve something. And it's nice the Irish people celebrate and not to, not to dismiss that they got there. Absolutely. She's not there by accident. Absolutely it's not. It's hard she's, work. She's and, there and by hard work. And I think no matter, like, whether it's for sport or business or career or anything, it, it does inspire people. And I think it's, it's great to watch that. And, and certainly at home, with the kids for these two weeks you kind of sort of the normal rules around TV yeah, go don't because apply, yeah. look at these are the best of the best you absolutely, know, and, and see, might absolutely. Just and I'm well. right in thinking that of the 200 countries we're number 12 in the, in the medals something like that and I think if you break it down per sort of like million population we're top of the table like Stop. It's, it's ridiculous oh my God. at this point like, and yeah. you know I, and I always say this this is the thing that never ever fails to amaze me that we compete in so many different sports, so well, and yet, our two most popular sports, the two that we have the biggest membership of, don't are not international. Yeah. So hurling and football are not international. So all you know, the, so many of our athletes go that route, which gives them no uh, no route into uh, international. So when you take all those people away, yeah, no, it is. and then it's, it's it's an incredible achievement. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. Quick one for you: How much is an Olympic gold medal actually worth, approximately? <laughs> it's not actually made of pure gold. I no, think it's of something not. like three or four percent pure gold. If it was pure gold, I think it worth about forty-five thousand euros. Okay, but it's about three or four percent. It's worth something like uh, nine hundred euros. So it costs about. A grand to produce, is that what uh, you're well, saying? say even probably less to produce as well. But right. George, you always see but that they're so heavy. I'll probably never have one. I might take up shooting like that Turkish guy or something. But uh, <sighs> anyway, let's uh, get back into the DIY stuff anyway. We've a couple of questions coming in, in there already. One listener's wondering about storage heaters. Are they expensive to run? And kind of a couple of tips on how to use them best. But you look, all electric heat is relatively expensive. You know, so it's an expensive form of heat. Now, it's a clean, safe heat. So there's no heat source that costs nothing to run. Um, the advantages of storage heaters are they are the cheapest form of electric heat because you're paying nighttime heating rates. They heat up during the nighttime and then they release heat all day. The disadvantage would be that there's no spontaneity with them. So, you know, you can't decide, oh, it's a cold day, I'll turn on the storage heater or it's a very warm day, I'll turn off the storage heater because it's a heat. So the way storage heater works is you have a big, big, uh, basically concrete block. You have stone, you have a heating element in there that's made of a stone-like material and the heat 
it, it's heated up during the night time at cheap heating rates. And then that piece of stone releases the heat all day. So if you have a very, very warm day, you can't turn it off. It's going to release the heat. And equally well, you know, you could have, you could have turned off the storage heater because it's been a good week's weather. And then suddenly it turns cold. You can't get up in the morning and say, ooh, I'm cold. I'll turn on the storage heater for heat today. It doesn't work like that. So there are pros and cons, and you just have to factor in where you're using it, what's your lifestyle, and, and then decide accordingly. Are they still seen as kind of a quick fix for a problem like that, or are there, are there better alternatives at this stage, given that it can be <laughs> There's so many different expensive. types of heaters now, and of course so many of these uh, heaters now are smart, as in you can decide, you can have them connected to your app, and you can say, I'm on the way home, I'm leaving work early, I'm leaving work late, whatever it is, I'll turn on the heat and have it coming on. So if you're only turning it on for short bursts, that's the, the, the wall heaters that are not storage heaters are probably the way to go. Another listener looking for a recommendation on a different electrical item, though. Can Brian recommend an electric garden shredder for a small garden for maybe around the 200 euro mark? No, it's not something I know enough about. Mm. Um, th- if it's going to be electric, you're probably going to be doing very lightweight. You're not going to be doing anything, you know, anything thicker than your thumb, I would say. So, and if that's ha- if you're happy enough that it's just for hedge clippings and lightweight stuff like that, that'll be fine. But I don't just stick to one of the brands and always buy it from somewhere that you can get a bit of backup. Yeah. And if there's an issue, that you can bring it back and they can look at it and fix it for you or whatever. And they can imagine check the maximum diameter of branch that Absolutely. goes into that as well. Yeah. Have you ever heard of a dry buddy, DRI buddy? Um, Somebody's wondering. No, because it sounds a bit like Will Faulkner, except he's not. He's not a buddy. (laughs) He's just. He's just really dry. (laughs) We might have to look into that one as well. Um, Jackie and Mullingar is wondering if it's less expensive to run than a dryer. So we'll have a look maybe during the break and see can we find out what a what a dry buddy actually is. Um, Yeah, a few other people have got in touch as well. One, I suppose. uh, comes up again, it's a constant issue for people across the Midlands anyway, is mould patterns on a bedroom ceiling, and this listener Anne has sent a picture, and where the wall meets the ceiling, there's kind of a long just kind of dark black patch good old, you've probably seen this all day we've, all, day. we've all seen it, yeah, so this is a very, very regular problem in Ireland, and funny enough, so many times someone comes into the shop, and they'll, you know, and it's great now, everyone takes pictures now, so it used to be for many, many years, we used to reckon half our customers walked into the shop and said, Sharp and take a breath, and went, eh, I don't know what I'm looking for now. It's kind of hard to describe. Now they simply whip out the phone and say, there's what I'm looking for, or there's the problem, or what do I do about this? So it's a very regular occurrence where someone come in and say, I never had the problem before. I got the walls pumped forward slash insulated or whatever, and now I have have this problem, and they think it's caused by that. And of course, it's not caused by that. It's caused because the majority of the wall is really well insulated, but there's a cold patch. Where the wall meets the ceiling, there's a cold patch. And because it's a cold patch, it's proportionately colder than the rest of the wall. You get a little bit of condensation. Not, Not run down the wall condensation, but just a little bit of condensation if you look closely, you'll see it, but you probably won't even look at, see it. Um, but because it's constantly damp, you end up getting mould. So, it's look, you can get up into the attic and see, is it a case that the the insulation can be pushed down nearer to the, the roof line? Um, but really, all you need to do is put on a bit of mould killer, and it's a double application. You put on the mould killer, you kill the mould, and then you wash off the mould, and you may need to do it a painting, but the real secret is... At the start of every winter, you reapply the mould killer. It's a two-minute job. If you do it when there's no mould there, it's a two-minute job. It's, it's mix it up, get a rag, and wipe it over the wall. That's it. Current conditions, with it kind of being warm and wet and it's, very... It's, it's cold. It's really, it's, it's cold. What happens is, I mean, many houses, you, you might remember the winter of 2010, which was mm-hmm. that really long, sustained cold spell all over Christmas, and pipes froze everywhere. There was mould stock growing in houses that winter that never had it before. And that was just because we turned on, we had the heat going 24-7 inside because it was really cold 24-7 outside. And then the, the few cold patches that were there were proportionately even colder because it was minus 10 degrees outside. And you were pumping up the heat inside, so it was even warmer inside. And then once the mould starts to grow... It just grows and grows and, and all, grows. And all running around like mad trying to get their hands on white bread. That's just right. Remember, yeah, remember that's right. To which, uh, I have a lovely text here to put to Mr. Brian Clooney, Brian Clooney and Mr. Fix-It here. 
says, Brian, we've had a big mirror hanging over the fireplace in the sitting room for the last 15 years, and last week, for some reason, the wire holding it up just broke. It came down with an almighty crash at 2 a.m., brackets, which resulted in me and in my jocks racing downstairs with a hurl in my hand to confront a burglar. <laughs> Unbelievably, the mirror itself didn't break. The frame split in two. Um, can we glue that back together? That's probably the least of the issues there, but anyway. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, it's a horrible thing. Do you ever hear a noise like that forever in the middle of the night? Yeah. You know, now, I'm going to ask you, you're a glasses wearer too. If you hear a noise, do you reach for your glasses? Oh, well, I'm blind. No, I'm glasses. the same. Like, even if I, I hear something outside, I have to absolutely. put the glasses on. So the what. first thing <laughs> is, I, I always say, did, I put, did we put on the alarm last night? Yeah. Because if the alarm was on, and then the chance of it being something, you know, untoward, it's a lot it's a, it's a lot less. You you relax much more. But you're hearing a big crash like that in the middle of the night. You can imagine some fellow racing down the stairs, ready to confront. I wonder how long before, uh, I presume, when he, it, jocks, when he said jocks uh, and a hurl, I presume it's a he, um, uh, how long before he went back to sleep because the adrenaline would be yeah. something unbelievable. Maybe you could have broken glass potentially if you're in the bedroom. Yeah, as well. so uh, look, I would always say if you're hanging a mirror like that, I don't know why, but if you use cord or the picture wire, it always eventually breaks. It just gets brittle. So um, I would say use a chain. Um, you can get a fine steel chain. It's not seen. It's entirely behind the mirror. So it's not as if it's going to be seen. So just get a fine steel chain. It's the cheapest chips and use that instead. Or better still, what I would always suggest is you can get what are known as mounting plates. And mounting plates are little, they, they look so harmless. They, they, um, you buy a set of four little mounting plates, two of them go on the wall, two of them go, go in the picture, and you literally just slot the picture, the mirror down. It's a, for a big picture or a big mirror, um, or in just what size it is. But the beauty is, the mirror is completely flat to the wall. Um, it's absolutely rock solid. It will never give way. But if you want to paint the wall, you lift up the mirror, paint the wall, pop the mirror back down on the, on the plates again. And the other great thing is sometimes I, I have a thing in, in that I like to, I have my father's minor hurling medals framed in the shop. And he has quite a unique set of hurling medals in that he won, he won eight, legally won eight county final minor medals. Between hurling and football. Between hurling and football. Okay. With two different counties. And the reason was that the very, in 1943, I think, they, they, because there was not a drop of petrol in Ireland because of the war, they actually played two okay. years together. Now, they played two separate matches, yep. but they played two slightly different teams. But um, he had the unique, he has this unique collection of medals. But they're hanging in the shop. And the reason they're hanging in the shop is that if somebody in who has a little bit of interest in GEA or whatever, you can, I have them in the mounting plates. So here's the point. If you have a, a picture that you want to be able to show people, it just right, slides you up, it up, you slide it up, you take it up, you show it to people, you take it back off them, and you slide it back down again. So mounting plates are a great way of hanging. And it doesn't matter how heavy it is, it will hang it securely and safely. And in terms of fitting those as well, for somebody maybe who's an amateur DIYist or not overly skilled, is it, are they relatively easy to do, or would you need a little bit of just expert The, expertise? the real secret is that the, if you, the, this is a, the tip that we always say to people. So you get a piece of masking tape, and you put it along the top edge of the mirror and you screw the two plates on. So now you have a plate on the right, plate on the left, the top of the mirror. And then you unscrew the two um, plates, and you take off the masking tape, and you put it onto the wall, and you stand back and say, does that look level? Does it? Because if the masking tape is level, the mirror will be level. If you don't have a level in the house, you know, which a lot of people won't have, if the masking tape looks level, the mirror will be level. So you now have a piece of masking tape with two whole little screw holes on the right, two little screw holes on the left, and now they line up exactly, and that's the job and done. And you've got your spacings as well. Really yeah. useful, really simple tip as well. Um, a listener has texted in to ask about why the paint peels off outside on the house. Does it need to be power washed off and sealed and repainted? I assume they're talking about maybe sills or wall caps there, if they want to text us in and clarify that as well, as probably opposed to the actual outside paint, but paint peeling off on the outside of the house. So, loads of different reasons. Sometimes it's just lack of prep. Sometimes people don't realise that if you paint 
on top of an existing wall that has never been washed, the amount of dust and lichen and algae that can be there is, even though you mightn't see it, it can be quite incredible. And paint doesn't like sticking to a dirty surface. So that can be part of it. Another regular problem is um, if you have moisture coming up. So very often you'll see where, say, an exterior boundary wall, so the wall at the front of the house is the paint keeps flaking off. And the reason being, because it wasn't a structure, it wasn't a building, they didn't bother putting down damp proof coursing. It's only an outside wall, it's only two and a half foot high, so why would I need to put down damp proof coursing? But the problem is the moisture is coming up and coming up. So the moisture from the ground is coming and traveling up the wall. And then once it travels up, sure it has to get out. The moisture has to get out, so it go goes out through the paint. So one of the things to do there would be to a, a, a use a stabilizer, but b use something that allows the, the wall to breathe. So something like um, Santex would be good, but something that allows the moisture to leave the wall. Now, if it's a major problem, it, it, that won't happen. You'd be end up taking off the, all the paint and probably replastering with a coloured plaster would be the way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, going back to the original one, yeah, power wash the wall and. Uh, Check it. Is there any algae growth there? If in any doubt, putting on a bit of al algae killer costs 20 quid. It won't cost much and it makes a difference. And then I would always, on the areas that lost paint, just use a, either a stabilizing primer or a water based primer to improve adhesion, improve the, the, the ability of the paint to stick to it, and then paint in the normal way. If that little bit of prep and patience prep or makes do the job difference. right once, you probably you know, won't have to battle it ever again. But yeah, yeah the listeners just confirmed that it is the paint peeling off the wall, so I think those tips will be will really apply as well. And Brian Clunan is still with me here in the studio, obviously, to take more of your DIY question and queries. Before that, just in addition to our community diary there, Baltic Day Festival takes place on Sunday, the 25th of August, in the Band Hall Mullingar Business Park from 12 p.m., celebrating Estonian, Latvian and Lithuanian culture with dancing, music, craft fair, face painting and artisan sweets and food. See Baltic Roots events on Facebook or Instagram for more information. So back to some of those DIY queries. Hi, Brian. We came back from three weeks in Spain. Very lucky. Sister has an apartment on Sunday night to find that a trip switch had tripped. The fridge freezer absolutely stinked. It stinks. I've washed it out a few times and still kind of got rid of the smell. And from Joe in Kilbegan. Well, first of all, let me just preface this by saying, just for those of you who didn't pick it up there, Ronan Berry screwed up and forgot to read out the first item of the community diary. So that's why. It's, he, you I know, didn't he's, forget. He's, I opened he, the wrong file. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> you screwed up. Open yeah. honest declaration. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. I'll remember And that. actually, I'll use yeah. this moment then just to say something and community, community related. Um, Putting my hand on the fader. <laughs> Tullamore, Tullamore Lions Club are doing a fantastic project uh, collecting spectacles from people. So we've already... Uh, collected about 5,000 pairs of spectacles and they go to the third world so they're, we all have specs sitting at home that are really anybody who wears specs you know you can't they're so expensive you can't throw them out yes but yet they go completely to waste so if anybody anywhere has specs drop them in to myself in, in Clunan's Hardware or any Lions Club member will take them from you it's a fantastic project and we're going to roll it out through the school do they have to be of a certain level they can condition can they anything. be missing lenses Look, to be honest with you as, as, as one of the people at the head of the project said to me if we get in lenses on their own, if we get in specs with a broken arm, the person that's going to get those specs, okay. it will change their life. If you're a child who can't see, mm. you know, that is life altering. If you're an adult who can't see, you can't probably earn a living. So it will change people's lives without, without a huge effort on, on our behalf. Fantastic. So now, back to the question. question about the stinky fridge. And I remember stinky fridge, yeah, it's a horrible, horrible thing. So what you're doing is, what, well, what I always suggest to people is, a uh, clean out every little, empty out everything, make up a solution of Milton and bread soda. Remember, Milton will, you know, slight, it, don't wear your best clothes, wear your oldest clothes. What you're wearing there would be perfect. Uh -huh. And uh, wash every single part of the fridge, but particularly the rubber seals. You're kind of massaging it into the rubber seals. Um, 
with this Milton bread soda solution and leave it for a few hours to work and then come back and wash it all off with warm soapy water then close the fridge and or the freezer a uh, fridge freezer whichever it is and set everything to the coldest coldest setting for 24 hours um, and then hopefully it should be fine yeah i remember having a similar experience years back in college coming back after the term had ended or after the summer and one of the lads had forgot to take oh, some no. burgers and of course you know you were paying metered electricity so there was no electricity in the house for about two months and I, i've been there oh. I've never thought of milton and bread soda though but um yeah such are such are the joys can easily happen too and you can use the, the you can make the strongest mix you can actually use the milton neat if you want you can add water to it the bread soda will dissolve down into it to make a kind of a gloopy but liquidy mix and as i say it's really in all the cracks crevices joins anywhere there's a join like the flat surface is easy enough wipe but the rubber seals do hold an awful lot. So, you know, put put towels in the ground or put newspaper in the ground or cardboard in the ground and make sure you're, you're rubbing that mix into the rubber seals really, really well. You're giving the rubber seals in your fridge a good massage. Right, so we'll leave it there, rubber and massage. I'm not going anywhere with that one. Uh, so, Brian, we used to live in a bungalow and have recently moved into a new two-storey house and have two young kids full of energy. I'm terrified one of them will fall out the top window. How can I prevent this and still be able to air out the room? And I'd imagine ensure that you're not um, restricting the windows from a fire safety perspective as well. It's kind yeah, of a, probably so a delicate balance. Yeah, there are restrictors that uh, all, like any builders providers hardware shop will have window restrictors so probably the best type is the one that has a little cable on it uh, sorry the easiest re- after fit the retrofit afterwards the ones with the little uh, cable on them and they allow the window to open but in the event of a fire they have a, a little thumb turn thing on it that's a little bit complicated which is good the small child can't open it but the adult can um, if you were if you were a landlord renting out a house with two story windows they have to be fitted so they are a legality I don't know what the situation is in a private house. I think in a new build, they have to be automatically fitted on it. Um, but certainly, it is this, anybody who's ever had a child. I know my father, many, obviously, many, 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 many years ago, came home to find me standing on the outside of the window. It was window probably around the time he won the minor medal, was it? 43 <laughs> yeah, years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was really scary. Yeah. And uh, But he managed to coax me back in saying that he had sweets for me. Yeah. But uh, yeah, every, every upstairs window with small kids in the house should have yeah, window I think it's just to bear in mind that there should be an easy adult override in the event Correct. because they're often an escape point as well. Um, some listeners text as well, you mentioned the mould remover bit earlier, can you just um, state the name of that uh, mould? Well there's loads of different ones, yeah. the one that I, that, that I would consider the best is the Santrax, S-A-N-D-T-R-A-X, I think Santrax, because it's, it's one, it's not a chlorine based one, it does kill it really, really well, and you mix it, you mix it twice, you mix it five to one for the first application, and then for the second application, you mix it three to one. The first one, you're mixing it, applying it, washing it off. The second one, you're applying it and not washing it off. And in a similar kind of vein, a listener said, Hi lads, my father's first anniversary mass is coming up. I need to clean my parents' grey headstone that has white spots on it. It's very dirty and the letters need to be repainted. Is it something I can do on my own? Nula wants to know. Yeah, so if it's white spots on it, it means it's not granite or marble. It means it's a limestone headstone. So what I would say in that case, the best way of doing that is to a very, very light sanding on the white spots, very light, a five minute sanding just on the whole thing, just just to break the surface and then get um, a brick or concrete cleaning acid and put it on, it'll all sizzle up, you can brush it on, leave it for 10 or 15 minutes or half an hour at the most and then get a nylon deck scrub and scrub it all off and it'll look like new. Painting it, um, you can either get a little artist paintbrush and brush it onto it or you can spray off the whole, you can mask off all the lettering, all in one big swatch and then you can spray on a, a coat of paint and then you can sand off the surface so what happens is all these letters are engraved into the stone so if you were to mask all around the letters so you know here lies Ronan Berry blah 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 you're taping all around the here lies you're not doing each individual letter or anything mm. like that you'll end up with a big square or a big rectangle all, when you spray it black and you take off the tape there'll be a big black mar- big black rectangle on the headstone and then you get some very fine sandpaper or f- sanding sponges are even easier to use and you sand everything down and because the the black paint is in in the indentations of the letters the flat surface will be all perfect 
the black will be in the letters and it's it's and quite a quick job be always mindful of the material you're working on then if it's marble or stone you know so be if careful it's, if yeah it's if, it's, if it's marble in your painting then you'll be using a blade to take off the excess paint not sandpaper mm-hmm. brian it's been a pleasure and i say that genuinely um, it's been <laughs> an absolute pleasure thank you i think everybody who's texting with all your issues brian will be back next wednesday uh, to answer even more of your questions